Someone brought me an instant Vortex Plus that had no power. While it was oozing grease from various places, it had no electrical burnt odor. What I found inside was a resettable thermostat that returned it to service, and I also found some clues as to what tripped it. Before we start, if you are under warranty, I always recommend that you pursue warranty services before you take your unit apart. The information in this video is for references purposes only and could result in further damage to the unit or personal injury. Proceed at your own risk. Your unit should be cool and unplugged throughout this process. To get to the bulb or the thermal fuse, there is no need to open the bottom of the unit as I did to investigate how to gain access. The electronics are under the cover, which is clipped in with six locking tabs on the top and three ridge clips that hold the front. You're going to need some patience with this. I used a long flat screwdriver. For some reason, one corner was already released when I received the unit, so it was a lot easier to do the rest. So you will need to work on getting the first clip done. I would say that you need to start on the back edge and try to release one of those two clips. These are long rectangular posts in a rectangular hole with a clip on the side facing the edge. There is no access to the clip from outside the unit. There is likely an opportunity to break off the post. Your objective is to get your prying device between the top of the clip box and the lid so you can get in there and twist and apply the pressure as close to the clip as possible. I actually did my prying at the end of the rectangular box in most positions because it was easier to access. Once you get the first one released, you should be able to wedge the, the top open one quarter to three eighths of an inch, and then you'll be able to see inside to, to work on the others. It would help if you had a very thin flashlight or some light you can project inside. After releasing all six, you need to pull the close closest to the front out of the hole. This is going to be, require a little bit of bending, so make sure you don't bend it too far. You just need to get the pose to clear the hole. Once you do that, you have some clips at the top of the control board. They should release fairly easily. And then the whole board should roll forward, releasing the three bottom wedges that are holding it in place. Now be careful, there's a cable behind there. So once you pull it out, you'll need to press the button in the middle of the connector and pull the connector apart. Once you have the top and the control board in your hand, take a moment to inspect the control board. You should find it in pristine condition. Uh, mine had no grease in it. You should find that nice, even coating of moisture resistance on top, no burn marks, and nothing that uh, raises any alarm that says there's a problem with it. I see no need to remove the board from the face if you're pursuing the light bulb or working on just a plain power problem. You should now be peering into the oven from the top. There's still a cover there, which is much easier to remove. Through this cover, you can see the relay board, the fan, and the door accessing the light bulb compartment. The only place you can see the thermal switch is the one post hole behind the relay board. For ease of access, we're going to remove the four screws holding the top. Once you remove the screws, you wiggle and jiggle and pull and then release the top. There should be no wires attached to it. Take some pictures of this layout in case you need it for reference. Once you get the cover off, take a moment to inspect the relay board. The relay board should have no evidence of damage, no burn marks, no discoloration. It should be, look clean and pristine. Look closely at the relays. The relay should have no burn marks or heat discoloration, which would be an indicator of a relay problem. At this point, if you're replacing your light bulb, you should have free access to the two screws closing the light bulb compartment. Take those screws out and that should give you access to replace the bulb. To address a power issue, the first thing we need to test is the door dead man switch that's on the front of the unit. The switch has two working positions. Both are providing power to the main relay board. The top of the switch is the common. That's the power coming from the wall. When the button is not depressed, the bottom right should have continuity. When the button is depressed, the top right should have continuity. If this test is good, it's not the switch. But keep in mind, the top contact not working would be no power at all. The door closed position not working would be no power at all. The door open position not working, the power would remain on when you open the door. Whereas in normal operation, when you open the door, the display goes blank. Once you've tested the switch, let's move on. Now let's look at the thermal switch, which is located behind and at a lower level than the relay board. Mine had a black button on it, but before you touch it, you should try to test the continuity. When I went to test the continuity, I heard a decisive click, and I realized that it had reset. You want to go ahead and test continuity between the two pins on the thermal switch. And what you want to do is identify that it has continuity or does not. If it does not, then the switch is tripped. If it does, then the switch is probably not your problem. If you haven't pressed the button during the test, go ahead and press the button. You can see here that they have screw holes for past design or future design where you can put a different sensor in. Any replacement sensor has to have the exact same fit and performance attributes. If your thermal switch will not reset or does not have continuity, do not bypass it. It is there to protect you. You should acquire a new one and then proceed with testing. So if you look at this photo, you can see that the wires leading out of the thermal switch have evidence of a heat event. You can see on the source side that the thermal switch terminal 
has a factory clean color of anodized metal. On the load side, you can see it is discolored and the heat shrink is melted away. The wires are wrapped in fiberglass, so it's hard to tell if the wire was damaged, but I don't see any discoloration or bulging in the wire to suggest it was compromised. Keep in mind, the thermal switch is there to do a job. In this case, it did its job and protected the wiring. Now, this could have been a one-time event caused by an operator action, bad power, or some other event in the oven that may not happen again. Or it could be an indication that you have a failing component. I would suspect components like the thermostat, maybe it was reporting a lower temperature than actually existed in the oven. It could be the logic board told the relay to turn off the element and the relay didn't do what it was supposed to in a timely manner, allowing the temperature to rise too high. Another possibility is the logic board wasn't working properly. Uh, I could have an element problem. If your thermal fuse trips again, you need to find the source of the issue. If I did not see the evidence of excessive heat or any other indicator that there was a problem, I would suspect that the thermal sensor could actually be bad and may be tripping too early. If you heard the click and went from no continuity to continuity on your thermal switch, then you can proceed with reassembling your unit so you can do testing. Reassembly is easy enough. First, we need to put the top back on. The curved part of the top goes near the front. Align the lid over the top carefully, being careful not to pinch any of the wires. On mine, they were all secured away from the edges, so it was very easy to align and set on. Make sure the control board wire which will connect to the front is through the top hole and not the bottom. If you forget to do this, you can reach in and do it afterwards. Once you align it, wiggle and jiggle it and push it down and all the seams around the edges should align with a very small gap. Replace your four screws. If you're using power tools, be very careful to use a very low torque and not strip out your plastic threads. Now align the front panel. Connect the wire that is coming through the top hole. Make sure it is fully pushed together so that it is clipped. Rest the front edge brackets in the holes. Now holding the front edge down so the brackets stay in the holes, you're going to swing the top over the face. Now as you swing it over, you need to get those first rectangular post holes into the holes. And once you do that, uh, remember that little bend you had to do to get them out of? You're going to have to do that little bend again. You're trying to push the control board face into the unit so that the top clips clip in. And you'll hear a little bit of a clip because they're not a strong clip. And then you can proceed with aligning your rectangular holes and all six holes on the, on the top. Once you have alignment, if you want to go ahead at this point and turn it on and uh, see if it power cycles and heats up, uh, I would say you can go ahead and do that. Once you're satisfied, you're simply going to push down on the top and all six of those clips should comfortably click in and the top should be on again. So at this point, hopefully your unit is powered on and it te it's testing okay. I would have to say when seeing this unit initially and seeing all the oil oozing from what looked like the seams, I expected the worst when I opened this. I've opened up microwaves and the entire microwave electronics are just covered in oil. I was very impressed with this unit. The electronics compartment was spotless. The components were well made, uh, well insulated, and well secured. The grease was really isolated to the cooking compartment, the areas around the door, and the small area under the door. If you take the door out, you can see that there's a lot of grease sitting in there. Well, that grease is actually sitting in its own compartment. When I took the base off, you can see that compartment was kind of isolated. So if you're cleaning your unit, you really want to try to reach down through the, the door seam there and clean that, or you could reach up through the air vents that are in the front there and clean that way. In worst case scenario, you could take the bottom off, but I don't think it's really necessary. It uh, looks like you could clean that compartment and not risk getting any water into any electronics. The fan, which is circulating the air and obviously venting uh, grease and other things that may spatter, uh, is actually very restricted on its exit. It's got this small rectangular box and it's well aligned with the rear vent. I didn't find any oil oozing down the back or going in places it shouldn't. So again, uh, very, very impressed with that part of the design um, and keeping all of that electronics uh, nice and clean in an environment that can be very dirty. I'll put a link to how an oven works and in there they have a, a video on how to spot a hotspot. Now going forward, uh, make sure that you give your unit to the cool down time it needs after you turn it off. So when you press the off button, you'll frequently hear the fan continue to run for several seconds to a minute. It's going through a cool down cycle and remember the unit's heating up as it goes along and you may open the door and take the food out, but the, because everything inside the element is still hot, the temperature can continue to increase. So what it's doing is venting that air until the temperature starts the decrease and then it turns it off knowing that it's not going to get uh, overly hot and trip the thermal sensor. You also want to check your power source. You can see this unit is clearly polarized. It expects the neutral to be uh, coming in on the blue wires and the hot to be coming in on the red. So make sure that the outlet that you're plugging your unit into is uh, properly supplying the power so that the hot leg and the neutral leg show up on the right connection. 
So hopefully you just suffered a one-time event and you'll never see this again. If it does happen again, you need to take it very seriously and uh, go about working on diagnostics to determine what caused the issue. I hope you have success in solving any issues with your unit and that you found this video of assistance.